let's move on to our uh, let's move on to our devotion session i want to welcome each one of you to 40 days revival meeting where uh, 40 different uh, individual adventist ministries will come together to take a devotion on uh, the book of prayer and revival by dr dennis mill Today is the day 32 and the speaker of the hour is Brother Martin Mandu from Heaven Gazers Ministry. We are very delightful to have you, Brother, and the time of, and the hour, uh, and the time of hour is yours. Very good morning to all of you. Am I audible? Yes, Brother. Go ahead. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I feel so honored. I feel so honored to be here to present the word of God. And before, before I speak anything from the word, let's have a word of prayer and let's invite the Holy Spirit that the Spirit may help us to understand the message. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this precious opportunity, Father, to come together to learn from the precious truth. Father in heaven, thank you so much we feel so honored. We feel so thankful, Father, that we could see one more day. There were so many people, Father, who, who couldn't see this day, Father. Father in heaven, thank you for we are among the living. May your name be honored and glorified as we learn together, Father. I pray that may the Holy Spirit be present amongst us to help us understand the power of message and may it powerfully work in us and through us. Thank you so much once again. Help us as we learn together. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, uh, today is uh, day 32 and by God's grace, the topic is the Sabbath rest. The Sabbath rest. And it's a wonderful and powerful story that, uh, that has been written by uh, our beloved believer and we, we had been reading and we had gone through 31 chapters and it is today 32 and by God's grace, today also we have a great blessing. Here in, uh, if uh, I hope many of you have gone through it and here it says, the gospel is taught in the creation story. The good news was taught through the creation. And today, as we study the word together, we will see how really gospel was taught in the creation story because when when at first when i studied this when it says the gospel is taught in the creation story i was i was thinking how and as i read through as i read through i understood indeed gospel was first first preached first taught through the creation story we'll study Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. We'll study Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 and 2. Here it uh, powerfully leads us how really gospel was taught in the creation story. It says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had made and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done we know that in six days god created everything god created everything and on the seventh day he rested he rested from all his work but for adam if we see it was opposite for him it was completely opposite why because he was created on the sixth day and the first full day that he had experienced was the Sabbath day. God first work, then he rested. But for Adam, first he rested. He rested on the seventh day Sabbath, then he started his work. Likewise, likewise is our redemption. Likewise, our redemption is until and unless we do not rest upon our savior until and unless we do not rest in christ we will not have redemption we will not have we will not experience that sabbath rest why it's a good question 
Why? It's a really good question because this re redemptive power, uh, redemptive power works. It works, and the creative power that was working in in creation is same power also work right now. That same power is in work right now. We know that within the within the six first six days, God created everything, and we know that the Sabbath day is the day a memorial for the creation but it is also the memorial for uh, the redemption and also for salvation on the sabbath day as we rest as we give ourselves all to him as we surrender what happens god recreates his image in us because of sin we have lost his image in us but through sabbath what he does he recreates that image. You work in us that he could he could restore completely he made which we have lost. We really need to rest in Christ because in Christ God completed the work of redemption and through his sinless life, death and resurrection we have a reconciliation to the Father because of him and his life we that gap which was built because of sin was filled. We begin experiencing God's redemptive work in our lives by resting in what God has already done for us. We rest in the fact that Jesus died for our sins and has given us eternal life as a free gift. We don't work for free gift. Free gift is gift. We have to accept it. We have to take it we have to take it we rest in the fact that we have christ's righteousness covering us we see that because of sin because of sin we became strangers we became strangers and for example if if in case you find a child who has no parents first thing what you do you cover him you cover him with uh, with a uh, cloth, you cover him and you try to look for their parents. First thing that you do is cover, cover the child, cover the child, then you look for his parents. And then when you don't find the child, child's parent, you, you may take the child to home and then give him a nice bath. Something for us to learn. Because of sin, we became strangers to the Lord. We were Still sinners, it says that he gave his only begotten son. We were sinners, we were strangers, but God gave his only son that we could be clothed with his righteousness. We could be clothed with his righteousness. We have been given a free gift of salvation. We have to take it. We have to take it. We have to allow his righteousness to come and rest upon us. We have to allow him to uh, change us. We also rest in the fact that at the cross, the power of our sinful nature was broken and we are now free to serve God. Daily, we rest in the fact that Christ lives in us and will live out his life in and through us if we simply let him. Until and unless we don't let him, he cannot work in us and through us. Once believers rest in these truths, they are able to work or faithfully serve and obey God in life and ministry. This rest is necessary for them to faithfully serve God. By rest, the writer says, I mean that they accept by faith what God has done for their redemption and trust implicitly in Christ. Rest, rest. The rest is just showing dependence upon the Lord. Is just so independent for the Lord. In Hebrews chapter four, we find a uh, we find a description of the concept of rest. We find that Israelites failed to enter the promised land. And when we read Hebrews chapter four, verse nine through eleven, here it says, "There remained therefore a rest for the people of God, for he who has entered his rest." as himself also seized from his works as God did from his. Let us therefore be diligent to enter that rest 
lest anyone fall after the same example of disobedience. God's concept, God's work is very clear. God's word is very clear about the concept of rest. When we enter into God's rest, we seize our own effort. We give ourselves all. When we rest upon him, we surrender all. We are told that it is important for us to seek to enter into his rest. Otherwise, we will also fail in our obedience to God because of unbelief. If we try in our own self to gain salvation, we will fail. Why? Because it is a free gift of God. We have to accept it. We have to accept it by faith. And God is telling, I have given you this free gift. You accept it. You don't have to work. Sabbath day, if we see how we can keep it holy by resting on it, by doing nothing secular on it. We keep the Sabbath day holy by just resting. Likewise, we, when we rest in Christ, when we depend upon Christ, that is how, you know, we, we, we are able to get that holiness back. We are able to revive, revive that holiness. Resting does not, uh, I mean, holiness does not come or that redemption oh, Redemption power that does work in us when we work, but it comes on, only when we depend upon our Savior. When we look upon him as somebody who thinks of us, who, somebody who cares for us. The uh, third last paragraph says, the only way to gain victory over temptation and sin is to rest in the fact that Jesus abides in us and to allow him to live out his life in and through us. We must rest in that truth through belief and not hinder God's work of redemption in our life by trying to work or exert our own effort to obey. Our part is to believe, choose to let Christ live out his life in us and through us. We are to rest in his completed work this resting in christ is the true meaning of the sabbath rest god calls us to experience here it says our part is to believe and choose to let christ live out his life in us our part is to believe how we can really believe how we can really believe sister eg white in her book writes that as we know the lord we continually obey him as we know the lord we continually obey him. In her another book, she says that obedience is the fruit of the faith. Is obedience is the fruit of faith. In her book, she writes, when we know God, we continually obey him. When we know God, we obey him. I hope you are uh, copying me. When we know God, we continually obey him. And she says in, another, uh, in her another book, Obedience is the fruit of faith. Obedience is the fruit of faith. Means we can simply say, as we know God, faith is created. Faith comes, faith increases. And this is how we understand this. We will not trust or we will not obey a person. We will not believe a person un until and unless we know that person until and unless we know that person as as we and 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 the and and the way to believe a person to obey a person is to first know the person until and unless we do not know the person we will not obey that person knowing comes first then we obey until and unless we don't know we will not obey means if we do not know the person we will not believe that person and how we can know the person when we spend time with that person. When we spend time with God, we will know him more and more. When we spend time with God, we will know him more and more. And the more we will know him, our faith will increase. Our faith will increase. Our faith in that person, will. our faith in God will increase. And as our faith in God increase, we will obey him. We will be faithful to him. We will believe him because we know him now. We have spent um, 
a good amount of time with God. We have spent good time, time of um, uh, amount of time in praying. So now we know who God really is. Now we know that we can really trust God. It is very important that we spend time with the Lord. Because until and unless we don't spend time with the Lord, we will not know him. If we do not know him, we will have no faith and we will not even believe him. Spending time is the starting point to believe. Until and unless we don't spend time, we will not believe. If we try, try hard to believe, then we will be trying by our own self. And when we try by our own self, own self, we fail. So the secret to believe is to know the Lord. When you know the Lord, you will believe him. You will believe him. God is inviting us today that come. He's saying, come, rest upon me. We see that the reason Israelites could not enter into the promised land was because they were disobedient. They didn't obey. And how could they obey if they do not spend the good amount of time with the Lord? If they had spent the good time of amount with the Lord, they would have been willing to obey. They would have been willing to obey. We see that Moses, who was leading them, or we can rather say at that point of time, Joshua, who was leading them, he was obedient, continually obedient with the Lord. Why? Why was Joshua so uh, 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 continual in his obedience? And why were the people, uh, I mean, Israelites not so obedient to the Lord? The reason, the answer is that the amount of time spent with the Lord. Joshua, just like Moses, he was spending a good amount of time with the Lord, is, uh, talking with him. And as he was spending time with the Lord, his faith increased. And he started knowing the Lord more and more. And he started believing the Lord because he really knew the Lord very closely, very closely. If today, well, by God's grace, by his great love that he gave his only begotten son, that we have salvation, that we could come back to him. But until and unless we do not spend time with the Lord, we will never realize, never realize the cost of the price that Christ paid up on the cross. We have to spend time with the Lord to really know him. And when we know him, we will obey him. Because God, through the Sabbath rest, he recreates in us a clean heart and renews uh, thy spirit within us. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11 says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. It says, remember. It says, remember. The reason the word remember is used is because Sabbath was not the first time. It was not introduced for the first time there, but Sabbath was from the very beginning. Very beginning at the creation. At the creation. And we know that Sabbath is the memorial of creation as well as redemption and salvation. And what it wants to teach us is that Sabbath is kept holy by resting upon it. We feel its redemptive work, its power when we rest upon it. We keep the Sabbath by just resting upon it, just resting upon it. We cannot keep it holy by working upon it. Likewise, if we want that redemptive power, that salvation to be ours, we have to rest in Christ. We have to rest in Christ. We have to rest in Christ because when we depend upon Christ, when we depend upon him, that is when 
our Lord and Savior starts work in us and through us. So let us, that as we, as we continue our lives, let us rest in Christ. Let us experience that Sabbath rest and what it has to teach us today. Let us rest in Christ for he says that come all ye labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. May God bless you. Amen. Brother, uh, for that wonderful devotion on Sabbath rest. Uh, now I invite each one of you to kindly turn on your videos and share your uh, positive comments on today's devotion. Thank you, Brother Martin, for the uh, wonderful message on this preparation day, just before the Sabbath. And uh, the wonderful reminder when God gave the Ten Commandments, the Fourth Commandment, the first letter starts, the word starts with remember. Now, God knew that we would forget that is why, you know, every no other commandment or no other promise, uh, I don't think it is started with the word reminder. So that's a very good reminder for each one of us. And Sabbath is very, very important, which is going to be the test, which is going to be the seal. And, uh, and uh, the whole world is, you know, focusing on the Sabbath, which is forgotten. And majority people are worshiping on the uh, day uh, Sunday. Uh, some people, they say it can be any day, no problem. Sabbath can be any day, whether Sunday or, or Saturday uh, or Monday, it doesn't matter. But the promise, the word of God says very clearly that seventh day is the Sabbath, the very uh, creation. God in his infinite love for us, he created this world in six days and the seventh day has given us as a special day to spend time with him, to worship him. And that would get us more time to get acquainted with him. God has given us six days for ourselves, for our work, for our family. He's just asking just a day so that we would know him. Only when we spend time with him, we would know him and we can be strong in our faith to face the testing times that are not very far from us, the Sabbath. That is going to be the time that we have to be strong and God will definitely help us if we remember, spend time with him. It will, he will strengthen us and he will give us the courage to share this Sabbath message to everybody. So thank you so much, brother, uh, for your wonderful message and may God bless us all to keep this as our focus. This is the seed. And it's not the, any chip or anything that is going to be placed inside our body. It is inside our hearts that is a Sabbath seal. Angels are going to seal us. That is a seal we should be remembering. Thank you once again. God bless us all. God bless you, Brother Martin. Amen. Amen. Uh, good morning, Jennifer. Nice to see you. Uh, thank you, Brother. It's a beautiful message. Three in one. It's the obedient trust and uh, the Sabbath keeping. It's a very, 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 very good. We are and we are proud to be an Adventist. No, we are. It is uh, we are remembering that Sabbath is we are for us for all. But some uh, other demands they are not. Uh, they are not following that. But it's a beautiful message. The best message in this obedience is very important. Uh, thank you, brother, for your beautiful message. God bless your ministry. Amen. Thank you, brother, for uh, reminding us that obedience is the essence of the rest in, of our soul in Christ. Amen. Amen. Yes, as, as we heard, uh, spending especially enough time with God, even though we might be involved in ministry activities, uh, even though we may be lost because we don't spend a special specific time with God, and that is essential to know more about him. Uh, even Christ spent, even though he has no time to put his head 
for sleep, actually, he he spent extraordinary amount of time in the prayer and personal communication. So uh, it's essential for us to spend more time with God. The more we spend time with God, as uh, Brother mentioned, it will be able to grow more in faith and in Him. So let us keep that focus so that Sabbath is a wonderful time for us to have a personal communication with Him and grow in faith. So thank you for that message. Uh, thank you, Brother Martin, for that message, today, today's message. Uh, yes, we have to follow the commandment what the Lord has. Sorry for the interruption. Sister Rani, please to continue. I think we had gone into the breakout. Uh, yeah, I think that was by mistake. Okay, fine. I just would like to continue what I said. In the sense, um, uh, this was, uh, the, the reading was very apt. The commandments, especially the uh, commandment of keeping the Sabbath is very essential because th these are the days where many of them are uh, uh, gone astray from this commandment. They feel that uh, uh, the, the, this commandment of keeping the Sabbath holy is taken away. And uh, so many of them are lost uh, eventually. So thank you, brother, for reminding us. And um, uh, it's necessary that we follow it, especially as we are in the last days. We have got to stick to the commandments what the Lord God has uh, written with his own hands. Thank you, sir, brother. Amen. Amen. I want to have a few points. Hello? Especially... Hello? Yes, please continue, ma'am. Ma thank you very much for a nice message. Yes, I agree with all of the other people's uh, message, but uh, one thing I have to remember when I met a Sunday worship people, so they don't, do not to keep the Sabbath. They know the Sabbath, they don't want to keep another one. They think they, they, think that, uh, completely they don't have to keep this, uh, all the, the Ten Commandments. God removed all the commandments, no need to follow the Old Testament. Well, end of end is the New Testament. This is the certain deception bringing all of the minds. But one thing you have to remember, obedience is better than sacrifice. You have to keep all the commandments. And so I was very, very sad to convince them, give them books to read and go through that. But the God will, will guide them to come know the, the truth. A very good message given by morning this brother. Amen. Thank you. Anybody else? If I could add a little bit, the Sabbath is the epitome of resting in God, resting in Christ. Oftentimes, when we are struggling for holiness, struggling against sin, striving for a holy life, we may depend so much on our own efforts. But the Bible says in uh, Isaiah chapter chapter. 30 verse 15, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. Quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And um, the Bible also says that Sabbath, sanctified, you shall keep the Sabbath. It's a sign of sanctification. That God sanctifies us. So really it is in resting that we really find our, our salvation. Praise God for this beautiful truth. I want to agree with all of your opinion. Uh, many people uh, suffer from many problems, but the only solution is to rest in Christ. Uh, only when we rest in Christ, we would uh, experience the free gift called salvation. I want, I want to thank uh, once again everybody for sharing your comments. Now let's move on to a breakout room. Please do wait as you will be automatically assigned.
working at the end time is attacking us is continuously attacking us so that he could break us and if he break us then he is the victor he is the victor and especially at current times i i realize that his main attack is at the families why families because we know that if family is broken the church is broken if church is broken then he is the one who will win so it is very important that at personal level we pray for ourselves and if we go to a higher level we should pray as one family strongly in spirit and if we go on one higher level we should as a church come together and pray because it's indeed a high time and we really need to be connected in prayer and continuously continuously be standing for the lord witnessing for the lord because it is very important and this is how this is how we can you know tell people about the love of god and most important thing most important thing and the last thing is that we need to live out the words we need to live out the words we need to set forth we need to project the characteristic of christ we have to have the character of christ by the grace of god because we cannot we cannot in ourselves have the character of christ we have to submit we have to surrender and when we do this he will work in us and through us and by god's grace indeed people will see jesus in us and when they will see they will by themselves believe and they will give their lives to jesus amen Okay. Uh, thank you, Brother Martin, for that uh, very nice uh, <clears throat> short uh, essence of your ministry that you have given summary of it. And we are really taken up by your passion and commitment. And we feel that God's hand is behind, his plan is behind, and his call is behind you. And he is leading you uh, through the ministry of heaven gazers. And as you say, that uh, Satan cannot... Uh, we are told in the spirit of prophecy that uh, Satan cannot uh, knock us down in truth because God uh, rooted us and established us in the truth, end time truth. But he can very easily knock us down in family life. In family and personal life, he can knock us down. So we cannot do anything about it. As you say, we can only surrender to God uh, and uh, invite the Lord Jesus Christ into our hearts and give our lives to him and he's the one who will put his wounded hands around us as a protecting shield and his blood around us like a wall and protect us through his grace and the holy spirit and uh, thank you for those very nice words that uh, you have given uh, may may the lord be with you and we'll unite our hearts in our 24 7 and family and uh, pray for you on the ministry in the future uh, we, uh, thank, uh, we are very happy about your commitment for the salvation of youth. Uh, youth are really uh, captivated by Satan in these last days. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll keep praying for the youth and the commitment that you have for their salvation. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Brother Martin, for sharing your valuable comments or valuable uh, information about your ministry. We will definitely keep your ministry in your prayers. Now, let's move to our closing prayer. I request 